Hello, my name is Roman Harkovsky. In this demonstration, I will show you WebSphere Liberty auto scaling using Docker containers. For this demonstration, I have a set of four virtual machines running on my laptop. And while I'm doing this demo, keep in mind this is a four years old laptop. I will be loading this system with many hundreds of concurrent requests per second. So performance will still be great using multiple VMs, even running in a laptop environment. I have four virtual machines, host one, host two, host three, and HTTP host. In my environment, host one will have Liberty Collective Controller, and host one, two, and three will all have multiple Docker containers running and handling user requests. The HTTP host will run IBM HTTP server with Liberty Web Plugin to do dynamic load balancing and I will also run JMeter on HTTP host. What I've done before this demo, I have installed HTTP server on HTTP host, so that one is pre-installed, and I also have the plugin. What I haven't done is I have not configured that plugin. I will show you how the plugin gets configured after we finish Liberty install. At this time, host one, two, and three are just plain Ubuntu servers. There is nothing installed on these servers other than just Ubuntu and the Docker software itself. With that, let me show you how I can quickly start, install and start and configure Liberty Dynamic Cluster and have it scale it up and down using Docker containers. So I'll do installation on host one. I'll open the terminal window. And for that, I have a simple script. It's install and setup script. Before I run the script, I, I want to very quickly show you the environment file. If you want to run this yourself, you, then there is a setenv.sh file where you can configure, if you want, how many hosts you want to connect. And you can have multiple different hosts. You can put automatically generated number of hosts and it could be dozens or even hundreds of different hosts listed here so they can all be dynamically registered you don't have to do that manually just dynamically register several hundred hosts and you'll be fine you can change my other defaults like name of the cluster the passwords and these are obviously very plain passwords um, and you could define the image name for container in this demo I'm not using docker trusted registry but in production you would certainly want to use docker trusted registry what i've done i just built the docker image once once on every host and it already has my application and the liberty container container itself so it's very simple when you use this script you don't necessarily have to change anything here but you still may want to look at that and at the very least adjust the names of the hosts that you're using so that's it. Now we can run the install and setup. I did download Liberty in advance. The Liberty is already uh, downloaded and you can see where uh, the Liberty is in this script where um, I put it in a project home underscore downloads directory and in my case the name of the file that I downloaded that's what it's called so if you go to wasdev.net and you download Liberty yourself make sure you adjust the path where you've put that zip file and if you're using a different version of Liberty you may want to update the name of the zip file as well uh, you don't need to worry about any of these other things because they should work with your Liberty installation. With that, we're ready to install Liberty. So I'll hit enter. The first thing that happens is that I will unzip all of the files and that will be placed in the local directory. Now, the installation process started. Once we're finished with unzip, I have put automatic acceptance in my script. So now we're installing all of these features into Liberty. Now this is doing product validation and one installation is done. So it took about what 10, 10 seconds to do the installation. Now it is creating a controller and that controller 
has been created now the JVM is being started so you could see on the right hand side the CPU I've only assigned a single core to this virtual machine and the JVM is now being started so once that JVM is up and running we can open the admin center so in the browser so we can see what's going on now the JVM is up and running and now what I'm doing I'm registering all of my hosts with collective controller so I will register host 1 2 and 3 the reason I need to register this host because I need to provide SSH credentials so that the collective controller can remotely using SSH stop and start docker containers using an image that I uh, pointed to and that will be done automatically based on the workload uh, we call it elasticity so you don't have to install Liberty on host 2, 3 and so forth uh, we will just simply stop and start those docker images automatically so we're registering host 2 and we will we already registered host one which is the controller server itself uh, host and now registering host three now you only need to register these hosts only once you don't need to do it twice because uh, once you register the host with collective controller from there on you can keep using that host forever unless you change the SSH credentials on that host in which case you will need to run a command to update that host now that the hosts are registered the script is now generating HTTP plugin configuration so that configuration will be a set of files that will point the HTTP plugin to the correct servers and I only need to generate that once and then after that the plugin communicates with collective controller and when you have additional hosts or you have new applications or the status of your servers change the plugin will be automatically updated by the collective controller so you only do just like registering these hosts you only need to register this plugin with collective collective controller only once now the installation is complete plugging has been generated controller is now up and running so you could see that the Liberty Collective controller is running and I have defined auto scaling which also means that I defined how many servers need to be started to handle my workload now you can see on the right hand side the CPU is still quite busy and this is very likely because because Liberty controller decided to start an instance docker container on this very host with my application because it, it randomly chose between host 1, 2 and 3 and it decided to run it on host 1 now that to make sure that indeed it worked let's go into the HTTP host and in my script directory there's HTTP subdirectory and for the very first time after initial installation I need to generate HTTP server configuration from what controller told me uh, from those files generated by controller through the shared directory now the configuration has been updated and now I can start my HTTP server now to, to see if that really works let's go and see if this application is working so I'll hit refresh and you can see that the uh, heat counter increases and it all comes from host 1 okay now I can also go on and on host 1 so you can see I can go either uh, indirectly through HTTP host because of the plugin so I have 27 counts and then I can go to host one directly if, if I want to bypass HTTP server and that gives me 28 uh, or I can go to you could see that on host 3 the docker container is being started as well and let's see right uh, so it's about a minute and let's see what's going on on host 2 
there is no container on host 2 and here we still have just one container. Now let's see what's going on with the Liberty in the admin center. Uh, for the first time I need to confirm security exception and let's see what our configuration looks like from the admin center perspective. So I'll click explore and you could see that I have three servers, two clusters, and three hosts. So let's look at hosts first. I have host 1, host 2, and host 3. And you can see that on host 3, no servers are running. So one was created, but it's not running. And now it finished starting up. So now one server is running on host 3, two servers running on host 1. So let's look at host 1. And host 1, I click on servers and I have one controller and I have Liberty Docker container up and running. Now let's take a look at the server configuration. Let me click on my host controller, host one controller which is my Liberty Collective controller and I'll click on configure on the left hand side and that will open up server.xml file. I can look at that server XML file in a design view or I can edit it in a source view, in XML view. So in a design view, you could see I have scaling definitions. There is a default scaling policy and there is also my scaling policy, which I defined. And by the way, I configured that I needed to be vertical scaling policy. And, or I could say I want a horizontal, meaning it will spread the load across multiple servers. Minimum of one instances, maximum of 15 Docker instances, it is enabled. And I bind it to my cluster and that cluster prefix comes from the setenv.sh uh, set file. Uh, you could see here's my cluster prefix right here. That's where it's coming from. I can also see that the metric of scaling will be CPU. I can also use heap or memory. So I'll click CPU and I'll say 20% minimum. And I can say, well, let's do when my workload goes below 30%, I will stop all, uh, I will start stopping my Docker instances. My, when my workload goes above, say, 80%, I will start new Docker instances. Now scale in meaning how do you stop containers and you can stop them as percentage. For instance if you have 10 instances and I say 20% then it will stop by 2. Or I can do instances. In my case I'll just stop them by instances every 30 seconds. And then scaling out is the same thing except this is when I add new instances and I click save. Uh, and, and I can also say what is the minimum number of servers. So I can say minimum of one or two uh, or whatever I like. I click save and the changes are immediately effective. So let's go back and see what is the total number of servers that I have. Uh, so because there is no workload on the system, the container on host 3 is not running and container on host 1 is running. So let's click on this filter running. It will hide the stopped server. So you could see I only run controller host one controller and I run my server over here or I can go and look at my clusters and I have a separate cluster for which is called the default cluster for my Liberty controller and then I have the cluster for my application and I click on servers and for that application I have again one running and one stop let's click on the filter just to see the running instances okay so there is only one running and now we can load the system with some extra workload so let's just keep refresh um, so it works now let me open the JMeter I have JMeter and you could see that I am going against the HTTP host which will go through the plugin and it will spray the load across multiple containers and I'm going against this URL driver license app and I can configure certain parameters and so forth and 
in my case I will be using 150 concurrent users and there's a report let me clean it up and let's load the system all right so you could see I am getting the requests uh, there is nothing going on on host 3 no containers started on host 2 there are no containers started and on host 1 obviously all of the responses they come from this instance of Liberty which is uh, G4 Liberty 1 container and I can look at my started instances what, what's going to happen is every 30 seconds which is a sliding window for my scaling policy you could see that uh, we passed 30 seconds and now that docker container on host 3 was new liberty and my application has been started so now I have two servers up and running to service my workload so if I go look on host 3 indeed you can see there is a docker container and the server is providing responses back to my JMeter application and if I so let's go against the HTTP host so that it will actually spray the workload so host 3 because this is uh, random host 3 host 1 host 3 so it, it works and let's just make sure that the host 3 is quite busy host 1 is also quite busy uh, we need to give it a little bit of time again every 30 seconds it will look at the workload and it will decide whether or not it needs to scale the application up or down uh, adding new instances to the cluster and eventually it will start the instance on host 2 so actually on host 2 it started a new container as well uh, in about a minute and eventually it will refresh the browser over here uh, the reason it takes a little while to refresh the browser is because it's 100% busy again this is running on the laptop with four VMs with 150 concurrent users hitting this non-stop so it doesn't instantly open up the browser uh, what you would want to do in production you probably want to dedicate a separate CPU to a collective controller and obviously browser as well so that they have a little bit of a cycles to do the administrative work not just user requests because otherwise it takes a little bit of time uh, to update that information and refresh the screen repaint the screen even now if I go to my HTTP host and I stop the workload on in JMeter you will see that once it finishes processing all of those requests the CPU load will drop down which it did on this host and it will drop down on host 2 as well it just needs to finish processing that workload and it dropped on host 1 and let's go look at our running servers so I have application running on host 2, host 3 and host 1 one of them is host 1 controller and I filter by running and now that I stop the workload it will take 30 seconds for Liberty Controller to re-evaluate how many docker containers need to be running and you see one just disappeared because there is no workload and let's see this is still running this one is still running and let's take a look at host one so it, it is also running okay so it will stop the docker on host two all right uh, one of the issues that you might have and this is what we observed here if the sliding window is too small like 30 seconds by the time you start all of the containers they may 
consume a little bit of CPU just for the start time and they may not be able to if you ran the workload at the same time as starting new containers and your sliding window is just so short then you may not have enough time for controller to make correct decisions so the lesson here is that the sliding window should be probably longer than 30 seconds it needs to have a little bit more time to make smarter decisions not to have the knee-jerk reaction and start or stop container every time something happens in the system so right now it stopped everything on host 2 and host 3 so we shouldn't see anything on host 2 and there is nothing in there and on host 3 there is nothing in there as well and that's what's reflected here now we can see three of them are stopped so on host 3 and two different containers on host 2 are stopped now again let's filter by running containers and once again let's go back here clean up and start the workload again and we will hit the Con the app once again with all of these requests do F5 and let's look at what's going on there so again host 1 is serving all of the requests and then after 30 seconds it will realize well my CPU is above the scale out policy which we defined as 80% and I need to start additional instances and you could see that indeed it started instance on host 3 right here so first it will start the container and let's see indeed the container is up and running and then that container will accept those requests from the HTTP server to service the workload okay so now it is steadily running the workload and it's 90% CPU busy which is above our 80% threshold and what that means it will go into host 2 and it will also eventually start oops and exactly as I was talking it started the container on host 2 so let's see indeed the new Liberty container was started on host 2 to pick up the workload if you had more than three hosts if you had 300 hosts it will work exactly the same way except you definitely want to use docker trusted registry so you don't have to rebuild those images on all of your hosts you just build it once put it into the DTR and have it served from there um, and the outer scale for all of the different applications and all of the different clusters you can define it separately you can have separate definitions or similar definitions for different apps and different cluster names and apply different scaling policy to different clusters now I can safely stop the workload in JMeter and what you've seen in this demo that in about a minute I was able to install Liberty server I was able to configure collective and I registered three hosts and then I generated the workload from HTTP host and I saw I showed you how Liberty scales up and down depending on the workload using docker containers thank you for watching